you use, brother? I do it through Spurs. First Samuel 2 and 6. I'm gloves as well. It's lucky I've got to get my gloves, man. <laughs> don't worry about it. Get him to do it. Yeah, so I mean, that's how it goes, man. I the Lord is going to rearrange things. Because we're not always going to be in that condition, and that also goes inside the faith. Just because you live, just because, you know, a group of people like us live in that predicament, that don't mean we're going to stay in that predicament. Things don't stay the same, things change all the time. Okay? We're going, bro. Life for example, if you look at those people in Ethiopia, they used to be the ruling class people of the earth at one time. They were the ones that actually set up the Tower of Babel at one time. Now look at the state of them. They were in the most degradable position ever. Okay, but they were they were in the power seat at one time. So it's the same thing that's happening right now. Right now, one we're, 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 um, we're um, subordinates right now, but the Lord is going to make a magnificent work, and He's going to pretty much raise us up out of our lower condition. Going the elect mainly. First uh, Samuel chapter two verse six. Yep. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Yeah, but you got That's why you got to stay in the scriptures, man. Because I mean, this shouldn't make you mad, man. Certain things can get you mad. You know, you got to stay in the scriptures. Go on. Verse six. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. Yeah. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, read, read that again. Read that again. Up there. Right. First Samuel chapter two verse six. Yeah. The Lord killeth. And make him alive. Right, the Lord kill him and make him alive. Go on. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Right, go on. The Lord make him poor and make him rich. Right, the Lord make him poor and nice. make him rich. That's how it goes. So, just, so when you, if you, if one person's poor or they live in that lifestyle, that's because the Lord sectioned them from the beginning to live that lifestyle. Right? Yep. If, like, for example, you got the aristocrats, you got the Rothschilds, the bankers, the elite. The Lord set them in that position. So the same way the law set them in that position is the same way the law can take them from that position and put them up and put them below, which is gonna happen anyway. The powers that be of this world, which is the, you know, just to be honest, the so-called Europeans, this is their power. So because they're in their power, guess what? The Lord is gonna take them out of their power. And they're gonna be brought low. Hell, Israel was in a state of power at one time. Now look at us. Yep. Alright? But guess what? We're going to be raised back up again. Why? Because of the tender mercies of the Lord. Go on. He bring us down to the grave and bring us up. Right. And bring us down to the grave and lift us up, man. Okay. Keep on. The Lord make us poor and make us rich. Uh -huh. Go on. He bring us low and lift us up. You yeah, go on. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Right. He raised up the poor out of the dust. Go on. <coughs> and lift us up the beggar. From the dunghill. Right. And when you look at when you look at the state of Jake, man, we're pretty much in that, that um that position, really. We're in the dunghill right now. Okay, we can go all over around the world. We can even go to Nigeria, we can go to even this northern kingdom. You got Jake's and you and I think we I think we might have seen certain things like that too. But I've seen two um I've seen two um videos. I've seen um Jake in you know West Africa actually living in the garbage field and also the northern kingdom at the same time. Where they're at. So you actually got our people living in, in those predicaments. So you may think your life is, is in shit. Right. But guess what? You got people that's living way worse than you are. Alright? Actually literally living in the in, in the other the garbage field. Yeah. Alright, so you may look at your life, you may look at yourself like that, man. I'm I'm fucked. I'm screwed. But boy oh boy, man, there's people out there that's got a real better than you do, man. Alright? And that's the curses, but like I said, there's going to be a lifting up. Go on. He raise up the poor out of the dust, and lift up the beggar from the dunghill, yep. to set among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Right, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. So eventually, if we're the, if we're the most honest people, we're going to inherit the throne of glory. Man. That's where we're going at the end of it all anyway. So, I mean, if you're going to do what you're going to do, just deal with it, man, because it's only before a temple, particular point in time anyway. All right? And also, you got to have faith, too, that you can get out of that situation. All right? Go on. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. Right, for the pillars of the earth is of the Lord's, the foundations of it, man. So, if you pray to the Lord, that any, I mean, if you're in, a, if you're in any predicament or 
you have, may have a disease or anything of that nature, you have to pray to the Lord for that matter. And, and, and supplicate and beg. That's what the word supplicate means. It means to beg. So you're supposed to beg the Lord. Beg, yes. What's that, oh, brother? Of beg, man. Beg, beg, beg. Yeah. All right? And that's, and, and that's a yeah. sign of showing um, humbleness, humility. Yeah. When you beg before the Lord. All right? Because it, it's happened to me, man. It's happened to me. Trust me, man. I, I pray to the Lord for faith and more understanding. And he's given it to me. So it works. So you have to have faith, man. If you're in a, if you're in a shitty predicament, you can get out of there, man. You ain't gonna be in there forever, but if you believe you're gonna be in there forever, then that's what it's gonna be. Um, All right. You 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 make the determination. Go on, bro. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. You're gone. And He have set the world upon them. Right. And He have set the world upon them. So the only the only entity that you have to pray for to make a change is the Lord. It's between you and the Most High. All right. Go on, you got, you got to go ahead. Go on. Verse 9. He will keep thee the feet of the saints. Right, I, I like that. I like that. He will keep thee the feet of the saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. The elect. But that all ties into believing in that. Again, go on. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Right, and the wicked shall be put out. Meaning Esau, the so called white man. Because right now he's living good. You got. You got Edomites out there, man. They got four to five different townhomes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they living out there in these different islands, Tahiti. Yeah. Okay, they living in the best parts of Jamaica. They living in the best parts of Barbados. Yep. And they can just, they can go backwards and forwards, man. They can go down to, um, you know, their nice little plush home down there in London or America somewhere. That's where their main location is at. And they got different townhouses all over the place, man. Yeah, yeah. I even met, well, I even was speaking to one guy, Kurt, you know, um, um, not too long ago, just real brief, and he was even saying that um, he was, you know, he was going to stay in California for, for a minute, and then go and then you know go to a different place. So I put it so I mean my mind, um, well should I say it like this? You know I thought of it, and I, and I thought of it like this is that he has different town places, townhomes in these different areas. Okay. You got people living good out here. He's devils, but it's their time to shine. Yeah. All right, go on. Right. To set among the princes and to make them inherit the throne. Right, so we're going to be set amongst the um, the princes, and we're going to be the princes one day, all right? And that one day is right around the corner. It's not no 100 years from now, yeah. or 2,000, another 2,000 years from now. No, it's going to be real soon, man, okay? And when this society comes to an abrupt end, the closer we get to the end of the society, the closer we're going to um, experience our raising up. The raising up of the righteous and the just, the children of Israel. All right? And that's why we chant the downfall of the system. And it's going down anyway. All right? It's going down anyway, man. We've been talking about the, the impending nuclear war for years. And everything that we've been speaking about for years, more than what, almost 50 years now, is now coming to forward to fruition. All right, our elders of elders have spoke the same thing, and we're saying the same thing, and the things that we've been saying for almost 50 years is now coming into full to fruition. All right, so it's already in the house. Go on. Acts chapter 2, verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. Right, and that's the sign showing you the end. You have something. Okay, you're going. Before the great and notable day of the Lord. Right, and before the great and notable day of the Lord. So the Lord's... The Most High is going to show signs of him coming by sending his son down by showing those signs. So when you start seeing, what is it, blood moons, fire needles on the sun, and all of these different phenomenons, what the world calls phenomenons, is to us it's a reality when we see these different signs. But to them it's a phenomenon. But when we see, let's just use that term anyway. When you see these different phenomenons happening in the heavens, those are the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. How was shot who the world called Jesus Christ, a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah, to be exact. Go on. So Mark 43, um, verse 6. Yeah. He made the moon also to serve in her season right. for a declaration of times. Right, and a declaration of times. And a sign of yep. the world. And a sign of the world. So when we see these different phenomena, I'm going to use that term, okay? Um, when we see these different phenomena in the in the, uh, the heavens, we're seeing signs 
of the ending of an age. We're seeing signs um, of the coming of the Austria the That's what it's all about. So let's go and read Luke 21, which we had before. Yeah, Luke 21, we had it before. We had it just now. Luke 21 verse 1, 20? Just read it. It says about the signs in the Oh. Yes. You take your time. I, I understand. Okay. All right. All right. Acts chapter 2 verse 20. Right. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Right. And the moon into blood. Right. And the moon into blood. Go on. You're going to have your blood moons. Go on. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Right, and before that great notable day of the Lord come. And what's going to consist of the day of the Lord? Give me that in uh, Zephaniah, the first chapter. Somebody get me the book of Zephaniah. More. Better than more, Yeah, keep going. Verse 21. Yeah, and it shall get, come to pass. Zech Zechariah 1. So whosoever shall call upon the name the of the, the Lord, Lord shall be saved. Give me that again. Then, oh. All right, let's do it again. Acts chapter 20, 2, verse 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, for the great and notable day of the Lord come. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be saved. Right, whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, don't get super, because like, you got a lot of people out there that watch my video or the brothers' videos for that matter, and you'll think, oh, it's, it's whosoever, so that, that, that denounces the whole idea that the Lord only chose Israel. No, it doesn't denounce it, it says whosoever within the house of Israel. It don't say that, but it's common sense. Okay, well, it's on a little bit more. Go on. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yeah, brother, you got someone here coming out. Ah, uh, stop. It's all right, man. Right, verse 22. Ye men of Israel yeah. hear these words. Ye men of Israel hear these words. So it does say that. Okay? So, here you go. Yes, so read, read what you got. So from now 1 verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. Right, the great day of the Lord is near. So it's, it's going to specify what it is going to entail. Go on. It is near mm -hmm. and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. Man, I thought God, I thought God was all love. Yes, you know. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Mm. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. So, so if, if, if that's the case, that means it's going to be a, a great and terrible moment. It's not going to be all good. Go on. That, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. Right, and it's a day of wrath and distress. So that's what is going to come before all of us on this planet. When this day comes, it's going to be totally in the state of depression. It's going to be totally depressing when the day of the Lord comes. Alright? And what's going to happen in the midst of that time is you're going to have um, the economy collapse. That's going to, that's pretty much going to start it all. And then in the midst of all of that, you're going to have different plagues that are going to go forth in that time. Alright? And then you're going to have the final, which is the, uh, the nuclear missiles. Alright? The thermonuclear war. The third world's war. So everything's going to come in the midst of that dark age, or that dark time, alright? And that dark time is right around the corner. Go on, so read that verse one more time. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near. Right, and it is right around the corner, man. Okay, all you got to do is like, like we just read, is see the signs in the heaven. And then we'll declare that fact, and look around, and also um, look into the financial markets, and that kind of thing, man. All right, and also look at, look at what's going on geo, geopolitically concerning this war. So when you look at everything in totality concerning this world, you can see where it's going. And it's right around the corner in terms of its downfall. All right, go on. It's going um, towards its, down, its, its, its downfall. Go on. And haste is greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. Right, even the voice of the day of the Lord. Go on. The mighty man shall cry their bitterly. Right, and the mighty man shall cry their bitterly. So that means right there that it's going to be very grudgy and bad and dark. Can right. I back up? Can I back up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on, go on. 
Joel 2 and 11. And the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahushai, shall utter his voice yep. before his army. That's the Shabbat woman, right? For his camp is very great. Yep. That's the angels. For he is strong that executeth his word. Exactly. Go on. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh, is great yep. and, ev and very terrible. And very terrible, terrible indeed. And that's why it says that the mighty man shall cry the ability. Because it's going to be very terrible. Go and on. who can abide? And it's who can abide it? Who can abide in it? The who that is talking about are those that are going to have the wisdom, understanding, to stabilize it. That's who's going to be able to abide in that. Go on. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Yep. Take ye heed, watch and pray. Right. For ye know not when the time is. Right, because it's going to come suddenly. Now, actually, no, you wasn't finished. Keep finish what you had before. I thought you was finished. You wasn't finished. So for now, one verse uh, 14. Yep. The great day of the Lord is near. Yep. It is near yep. and hasted greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. Come. The mighty man shall cry their bitterly. Right, the mighty man shall cry their bitterly. And we just expounded on that by the brother V. that recent. Okay, go on. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. Yep. A day of wasteness and desolation. Mm. Right, a day of wasteness and desolation. Give me Isaiah the ninth chapter now. Isaiah 9 and uh, what is it? I believe it's 5. Go on. A day of darkness and luminous. Right, a day of darkness <coughs> and no light in it. Luminous. Go on. A day of clouds and thick darkness. So I thought the day of the Lord was going to be about love and everything. Bringing everybody together. Oh, happy old day. Right? Nope. It's the quiet country. Go on. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities. Right. And against the high towers. Yep. And I will bring distress upon men. And I will bring distress upon men. That includes women too, but it just mentions men because men come first. Go on. And they shall walk like blind men yep. because they have sinned against the Lord. Because they have sinned against the Heavenly Father. And that's the nation of Israel. They're the only nation that can sin. Nice, brother. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. And their blood shall be poured out as dust. Right, and their blood, you know. And their flesh as the dome. Uh -huh. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. Right, so there's just pretty much going to be a lot of death out there. The spirit of death is going to consume the earth. And the Lord is going to sanction that to happen. As we just read in, what is it, uh, 1 Samuel's second chapter. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. So he's going to set the spirit up and the spirit is going to be of death. Okay, why? Because of the judgment that needs to take place and also because of the error of man and the error of mankind. And that's why there's going to be death out there and destruction out there. Alright? Go on. The whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. And the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of what? Go on. But he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Right, so America, mainly this is talking about America. America is going to be obliterated of the face of the map. Now I know that's, that seems impossible to the carnal mind. But the Lord is going to make do of his work. Okay, just because America has all of those aircraft carriers and has the abundance of weaponry, that does not mean that is this is this not this let me reiterate what I'm saying. Just because America has all of their weaponry and all of their goods, okay, that doesn't mean that America can't be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. All it takes is for all of these nations that are allied with America to go up against America and plus their, their natural enemies to move. Alright? To turn on America and America's out of them. Good. It's finished. And that's what the Lord is gonna do. The Lord is gonna turn the allies of America against America. Go on. Um, that's it. But right now, Isaiah 13. Um, yeah, that's a good step too. That's a good one. Yeah. Verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both of wrath and fierce right. anger. Uh, so the Bible is telling you again. The Bible again is telling you that the day of the Lord is coming cruel. Go on. To lay the land desolate. To lay what land desolate? America. America, is brother. Desolate. Great Britain is going to be a part of that, but America is going to be totally desolate. And it's going to be so desolate that even uh, desolate creatures are going to inhabit that land. 
A lot of people still feel great. That's gone. Yep. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Yep, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Go on. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, uh -huh. and the moon shall not cause a light to shine. Right, the wisdom and understanding of that, that land is not going to be there anymore. Really. Everything's going to perish. Go on. And I will punish the world for their evil. And I will punish the world for their evil. And that's why a great judgment is going to come down in these lands. America especially, because America is a proud city. Okay, give me that in um, the Apocrypha. Um, when he speaks about the proud, the lofty cities being destroyed. Yeah, keep going. Let me see. I can, I can, I can probably get it. I know exactly where. It's and at. I will cause the arrogancy uh, of the proud to cease. Right. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. It's the number one nation on the planet that's really prideful and arrogant. Is the so-called Europeans, the Edomites. Mm -hmm. They're the ones with their, their heads up high. They're the ones that's puffing their chest up. They're the ones that have this mentality that everybody below them, um, or should I say, everybody that has dark skin, that's what I wanted to say, is pretty much below them. And that's the mentality of these devils, man. Okay? But that's just the Lord puffing them up to get them prepared and ready for their own downfall. Man. As it tells you the scriptures, pride go before destruction. The Lord got them in that trick, man. So it's the trick you gotta look at. <laughs> See, the Lord got everything under control. Yeah, so uh, what we're gonna do is. The lofty cities. See, second Ezra. Get second Ezra 15. It says, and I'll punish the world for their evil. Yeah. And the wicked for their iniquity. So this is this is prophecy. This is future prophecy, saying that the Mosai is going to bring this judgment as a form of punishment, all right? Because the Mosai wants this world to be in the image of the heavens. But right now, the image of this present world is in the image of, of darkness, huh? and wickedness. All right, and the people they've chosen a way of wickedness, man. And the Mosai is going to bring this judgment. For, for, for punishment, so it says, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Right, because what the Mosai does before he judges people for their sin, he sets out his prophets to let the masses know, listen, this is what you're supposed to do in order to avoid death. All right, and if you don't, and if you follow these rules, then you're going to get the reward, which is life everlasting. And really, this message was, to, was our many are called. Only a few are to be chosen to be exempt from that punishment. Right? So, and the ones that aren't exempt from that punishment are the, are the sinners That's of the right, Lord's brother. people, That's which right. are going to be destroyed yeah. by what you see down here as the nuclear fire. This is the, this is the, um, the second death that the Bible speaks of. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The second yeah. death. The most has two elements water and fire. The most has destroyed the old world by water and wiped out the wicked, all right, using the element of water, all right? And the Mosai is gonna use now the element of fire, all right? The all our ancestors prophesied of to wipe the slate, the slates clean exactly. once more, exactly. all right? This is why the scripture is called the second death, all right? And those of us that are the Mosai redeemed worthy to escape those terrors, are going to be the ones that's going to consent to the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh So they said, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Yep. I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Right, the arrogancy of the proud. The proud. They're speaking about all the other nations outside the nation of Israel. They're the prideful. Of course, this is the, the time of the Gentiles. Right, right. It's the time of the Gentiles. Okay, but the main top proud nation. Esau himself, since he is a proud man, need to keep it at home. All right. So proud is the, the, the what Esau. He is the physical incarnation of pride, man. Mm. Oh, uh, a, a main characteristic and attribute that the Most High hates in man. And yeah. Esau, he's the living personification of pride, man. Yeah. So the Most High is going to lay low 
that his arrogance, right? Because the scripture is talking about the arrogant man. Right? That's two things on um, the, the, um, the evil way and the arrogant. And the arrogant is that the most I hate them. Those two things. I think that's in the book of Proverbs. Yeah, a proud look. A proud look. An arrogance. Alright? Because when a, when a man is arrogant and proud, that's when he departs from the most high. And he, and he forget that he's supposed to humble himself because his, his days are not good, but a few. And that he's of dust. Alright? A dust that we come, and from dust we shall return. Alright? So therefore, a man got no reason to be arrogant or proud. Because the only, only entity that can be proud in this earth is the most high himself. Because he's everlasting. Alright? He's of everlasting. He's he's the mm. author. Alright? And the and the, and the originator, man. Only he can say I am and none else besides that. Exactly. Yep. That's what the scripture says, exactly. oh I looked and there was none else to help. Yep. Meaning there's no there's no one else that can stop the judgment that he's gonna bring. Yep. Alright? No one's gonna help Babylon when he brings that judgment. Alright? So the only entity that can't be proud is the most high himself. Right? Because he, he created pride. That's it. Love he created pride. Right? Pride originated from the most high. Alright? So when he sees that, that same characteristic of mankind who he created, he's looking at mankind like, well, what are you going to visit? That's, that's me. And you know what I can, That's me. He even says in the scriptures that pride was not created for man. Yeah. Pride could not be created. The most high is proud. He's, he's proud. The most high say, I tread down the people and none beside me. That's, that's pride. That's a man that I did that. I did this. I did that. The most I speak proudly. When, he, when he's in the scriptures, he, he, only he can be proud. Only he can say, I, as a mighty man, went through the people. I delivered you for my name's sake. Why I'm delivering you for me. Alright, so the most I can be proud. So when Esau being proud, the, the vessel that the potter has created, you're looking at you like, what do you ever know? You didn't create yourself. I created you. Right? You're gonna humble yourself and acknowledge me. Alright? Man must be humble. Right? Because he, the most high, giveth and what he taketh away. Alright? So that's why the most high is gonna what? Punish the world for that element of evil. Right? Pride. I'm just gonna say, um, I believe in second earth, just say, um, most has gonna cast down the cities because of pride. But you know, no brother, we got it right here. We're gonna get that second Ezra, man. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. Right, the city shall be because of their pride, because it's so like it, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. And that's the one, like the brother was saying, that's the element that's gonna bring Esau down. It's pride, man. Because see, when you when you're pr when you're prideful and you're arrogant, you're so caught up in yourself that you're actually not looking at what can befall you at the at the last, or what mistake you can make. Because you're caught, you're so caught up in your own hype. But when you're prideful, man, and also I want to say this as well, when you're in that state of pride, and people tell you what to do, and it's for your own good, you ain't gonna take you're not gonna take that on board because you're gonna you're gonna say to yourself, well I know that already, All right? You don't need to tell me that. I already know. I got it. And he could be telling you something that's gonna pretty much save your life. But because of pride, you don't wanna hear what you gotta say. Because he may be of lower degree than you are. You know, and that's pride. But because of pride, that's gonna be that's that's what's gonna bring the downfall of the system. Well, the houses shall be destroyed, yeah, and the men shall be afraid. Because I mean if you look at Great Britain as a whole, and really London especially, London is a proud place. It's a it's a prideful city. Okay? Arrogancy runs runs in London, man. Okay, I mean you can go to different parts of England, and there's like different states of minds when you go to these different areas. But London is a proud place, man. Arrogancy flows down here. Have you gone? Well, verse 16, verse 1. The preparations of the heart in man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Yeah. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Right. For the Lord. We have the spirits. Right, so in other words, the Lord even controls what comes out of your mouth. So if the Lord controls you, what in the hell do you have to what what in the hell do you have to be proud of? And you know, so you got these elites, these bankers, they believe that they're gonna upset the plans of the Lord. Why? How the hell do you how the hell can you think that you can upset the plans of the Lord when the most I made you and created you to do what you're doing? 
they call it work, man. The most are already clear destinated what they were what they were going to do. Yeah. All right. Bring out the RID chip in the in the oven under the intention of them setting the new world order. Okay, and then at the last, come against the men of the Lord to fulfill his will. But they're gonna act as though they're gonna pretty much complete their plans. That's not gonna happen. But even, I don't even go as far as saying even on that level, the Lord shows their delusions to believe in that. Hey, that's in the scriptures. Okay, you got some more, man. This is verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction. Exactly. And the haughty spirit before a fall. And that's what pride does, man. So, I mean, that's why the scripture says the more 